Well, I have a very important guest. Well, to me it's important because the beginning of his name is Sir and uh, we have all Sirs coming out of good old Great Britain and of course I'm British, Sir Alfred Devorah. And how are you? I'm great. You're all the way from Palm Springs. I am. Is he good looking, isn't he? <laughs> I'm jealous because he has a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Vegas Live with Nina and I'm Nina, your host. Um, I'm going to call you Sir, Sir Alfred. Yes. Are you used to that? I am. You are? Yeah. <laughs> quite, where were you where were you knighted? Because you have to be in, you know, you have the knights. Yeah, I yeah. was knighted in Malta. In Malta. Yeah. Now why in Malta? Well, you know, Malta they do knighthoods out there depending on, you know, what you do. The status of your Yes, of course. It's... Yeah, so in my particular case, I I was an altar boy and grew up and next thing you know I was doing fundraising for kids and one thing Lovely. after another and somebody suggested this gentleman should be knighted he does too much work. So you did a there. tremendous amount of charity work for children and everybody else. Yeah I did I did it for myself not knowing that this would happen to me but No no was, I'm quite was, sure you didn't do it for that reason I'm, right. I'm going to be if I do all this I'm going to get become a sir. No, yeah. I'm sure you did not do that because you yeah. don't look the type that would do that. <laughs> so you just willingly did that you just helped other other people. Yes. Did you help other people because you felt you were so fortunate? I helped other people I, in the beginning and, and now. I mean, we, I help kids because they're unfortunate. They can't they help themselves. No, they cannot. Thank you. They so can. in business, I do help people all the time. I give them advice, do the right thing. You know, the experience that I went through getting yes. to where I was. Yes. Because I started with nothing, $400. <gasps> You're like I am. I didn't. I started with five bucks. Ah. I, left, I left home when I was 16 with five bucks. There you go. And no education. I didn't even go to school. Right, well, I barely passed barely, high school. You barely <laughs> got through school. So we had a similar kind of sort of entry into the world yeah. and being successful. Um, I assume that you've been successful because you've probably worked very hard and you've probably always known what you do. Um, when you came out into the world and you were like 16, 17, 18, what, did you know what you wanted to do then? Or I knew what I wanted to do since I was eight years old. And I really? did exactly what, what, and what was, that dream was. And what was that? <laughs> I was manufacturing automobiles. And that's what these are right here. This is one of them. This is called uh, w what we call our driven art. This is driven art. So here's. <gasps> oh, look at this one. This is amazing. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look yeah. at this one. I can just see this driving through the streets of Palm Springs. Yeah, they're $1.2 million. So. $1.2 million. A couple, please. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow. I manufacture a lot of different cars. The Clinet, you might be familiar. I'm familiar with the Clinet, yes. I'm the, I'm the guy that owns Clinet. You own Clinet? Yes. Yep. You know, I have a very famous guy on set, and you're just <laughs> like a regular guy, and you are just like a regular guy. I think that's probably why you are who you are, is because you're just a regular person, and you don't think anything above it or beyond it. Yep. So how did you become successful? Was it hard work? Was it knowing people? How did that start? You know, a lot of people tell me that I have a lot of luck, and I tell oh, them... Oh, I don't know about that. I tell them, I, luck is a four-letter word. It's called work. Yes. And so I'm a guy that works 16-hour days, and my wife will tell you that, you know. You're still she's never a, home. You're still well, she says I'm out helping the world and, you know, not home. But, so but it's that's a hard you, balance. But, but isn't that what you've always done, though? It's kind, that's always. kind of been your, your life. Always, yeah. So what gives you the tenacity to help other people that may not be able to help you back? But you don't look for that, do you? I, I don't. I You know, I, I enjoy building things. I'm, I'm the kind of guy that goes out there and wants to build things. I want to be challenged. Um, for instance, I built the world's fastest small supercomputer in a language, one of five people in the world. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The yeah. fastest computer? Right, that was back in 1997 through 2000. So That's amazing. Yeah. Because we always want them faster. We want them as fast as possible, don't well, we? We still do. Ours plugged into a normal 110 wall. It was amazing. Uh, and at the time, everyone said to me, this guy's nuts. Why is he building a supercomputer? He's in the car business. And I always told them cars are going to become computers. And they really called me nuts. And today, guess what? You're driving a computer. So are you doing computer cars now yourself? Absolutely, yeah. We're doing an electric car that's coming out soon. Okay. And, are you going to be um, on the stock, stock market? Uh, not in the beginning. 
Uh, yeah, because so, we don't need to be. No, but, <laughs> but watch out for it. <laughs> exactly. Watch out, it's going to be there. <laughs> I want to know all about this when it comes out. But So you started the electric cars way before Musk? Oh, way before. Way before Way before. Him. We have different technologies. Yes. We're, we're a, a total green initiative. So I created 50-50 antifreeze. So you just pour it in. Um, right now we have hemp that is a dye for the material for the seeds. We uh, we actually what do you mean hemp? We actually grow the hemp. Now hemp means we're talking about weed. That's correct. And then I know it, well, I know where we're at. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm with it. I'm well, with I mean, it. Hemp's been around in the 1900s. Yes. Oh come on! It's been, it was in in Asia. 18, 1800s. It was Asia as, as, as a as a medicine. Right. You know, and they dropped it all because it was inexpensive and everybody got cured and. Or the pharmaceutical people couldn't make money. We weave it, and then we turn it into... Cloth. Cloth, of different amazing cloths. And then we created a new dye, which is non-toxic. Because the clothes you're wearing right now are toxic. It's okay. from the dye. What about your clothes? The same. But oh. soon... So we've both got toxic clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> soon we'll, we'll have non-toxic clothes and non-toxic, uh, you know... And the reason for that is, is that we've came up with a dye from tobacco and from hemp. And we've mixed that with dandelions and roses and came up with this beautiful it's color Funny spectrum. you're saying tobacco. Now, tobacco has always been a no-no. No. Right. So I, now you're using it in another form. I believe, and I'm not positive about this, but we're the only company that has the only to non-tobacco patent. So we actually have the tobacco patent that I'm sure they would love to have. Well, I'm sure everybody would love to have what you've got anyway. Right. You've got, you've got, you've got an awful lot of stuff going for himself. <laughs> but it's all hard work. So you've actually gone into the future of life. Many years ago, you started this, of the future of what's going on with our world. I, in about two, 1997 is when I started. You started and what uh, on made this you track of going, you know, totally green. So what made you go onto that track? Why did you suddenly realize the pollution or cars or what was it that sort of... You know, I you? travel the world. I went to China, I went oh. to Vietnam, and when you see the pollution, you just say this... This, this is got, ridiculous. This has got to stop. You yeah. go to Mexico City, this has got to stop. Yes. And eventually it will hit us. Absolutely. You know, we're, we're not impervious to anything. No, we're not. But I don't know if anybody's ever realized, but through the pandemic, there is one good thing that happened in the pandemic. And it's exactly what you just said. If you looked at the pollution, and I'll use China, you looked at the pollution on one side of the screen of what it was before the pandemic. Right. And you look at the other side, it was chalk and cheese. And this was all over the world. The actual atmosphere cleared up completely. And I know right. what you're saying. I remember being in Spain. Spain was really, really bad. bad. <laughs> I agree. You know, Barcelona, yes. all around there. Really, I yeah. mean, you, you couldn't really see the, the smell and everything and the cars. Because yeah. everything's so cramped. Burned your eyes. Yes, but so cramped into it. But with the pandemic, so that was one good thing. So, yeah. so that was a good thing that cleared. So it gave us, if anybody noticed, of what really does go on out there. Yep. So we've been working on batteries. We've worked on a new motor. Uh, our motors are all made from aluminum for the electric car. So we're really a technology company yeah. that's delivered into different products to show people. For instance, soon you'll see big designer clothes, and I can't say who they are, using in our fabrics because of our dyes. So now, you now have a fabric factory? Oh, yes. Where? Yeah, it's in Missouri. It's in Missouri, so it's American-made? It's totally American-made. Is everything made. you do American-made? Everything. That is refreshing. That yeah. is a, and yeah. ha, was that hard to struggle through that to keep the price down? I don't think you were concerned about uh, price, though, we, were you? You know, we are. I mean, you have well, to be yes, conscious, yeah, of, yeah. conscious of price, but it's about the volume that you you know you're doing. So. Yes. And we're growing like wild weed, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> Wildfire, wild weed. I love it. I love it. So you're growing. So you have your own grounds. You have your own farms, then. We do. It, it's called Tiger Fiber. I'm part of the organization. We took the dye, which is Demora Colors, and moved it into Tiger Fiber because they both melt together. So okay. soon your hotels will have the drapes made from Tiger Fiber. Now, the interesting thing from our dye, insects don't like bugs, right? So, okay, so where like, are you going well, with that? Well, insects don't like tobacco, excuse me. And so what happens is that they have the smell 
embedded into the dye itself. That the insect can smell. Yeah, and so a cockroach would turn around and run the other way to get away from tobacco. So it's helped the automotive so, industry, hotels, Hawaii, you know, places well, around. Well, Hawaii especially. When you have all these bugs, they won't want to hang around. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. And then so the other no thing more is, pesticides, which means no more the pesticide stuff going into the rooms that sometimes you're going to breathe it or not, but well, mostly you're going to breathe it, yep. you know, but which is not good for your lungs or for your body. So, yep. so you're creating something that's kind of, it's worldwide, it's world human, and yep. it's taking care of, never mind people, but cars and everything. Right. So what I do is I look to partner with other people and say, you know what, let's create this, because I don't have all the time in the world, right? Well, I mean, there's, there's only, only so many. Yeah, only, right. yeah. So, and th this is what happened over the last 18 years, we've created this, and... Um, it's only the, taken 18 years, that's 18. all. 18, yeah, 18 years. That's not years. very long. Well, it doesn't to seem it to be no. now, but going through yes, it. Yes, going through know. it all was a... Yeah. Was a uh, did you come up, uh, up across anything that you, you, know, you really had to fight to get through? Oh, constant. Sort of, yes. Uh, government regulations. I was going to say, the government regulations testing, make everything so everything. difficult. They, yeah. they make it such... Yeah. A, they make it so difficult. You yeah. know, it takes years to get something passed through, which will be passed through in one second. Yep. And that's one thing I hate about politics. That, oh, we'll put it aside, put it aside, put it aside. And they could pass it that very time. Sure. Well, 18 years ago, it was very difficult. In today's environment, where easier? everybody now, it's gotten much easier. Oh, good. Yeah, oh, that's one cool thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's helped. We've also created, because of the dye going into the drains, there's no way to get rid of the dye. You just can't clean up the dye. It's really brutal okay, you know, so for your cleanup systems. So we created how to clean it up organically as well. So we have a full, I go after full solutions from start from to the, finish. From the, no pun intended. So you right. go from the beginning all the way through to the end. So right. you clear the whole thing. And it's like you built the car. You've built the car where you've got everything working in the right order with, you know, with the power and the, and the electric. Well, not only that, you uh -oh, can't smoke my car, but you can, we're building the hemp, the cars out of hemp, the actual bodies out of hemp as well. So a lot of people kid me and say, well, if I get in an accident, can I break it off and smoke Local it? Say, no, it's <laughs> it's hemp. It's not CBD or no. <laughs> recreational. It's different. Yeah. It is. Do, oh, that's a good question. The difference. Hemp, marijuana, CBD, difference. Oh, completely. You can't. Um, the, CBD. That, people are afraid of it. I say no. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah, I, would, don't be, I wouldn't be afraid of it. I mean, no. not at all. But hemp is completely different. It's the weed. It doesn't bud. It doesn't, you know, it, it's... It's the weed that doesn't bud, but it makes material. It, it makes right. like car yes. appliances. It, it does a whole yep. tremendous amount. Um, are people having more hemp farms? Because I know that a lot of the farms, um, they've passed through to, to be allowed to grow weed. Yep. A lot of them, um, back east and everywhere, they, they've, they're allowed yeah, to... Yeah, that's why we started in Missouri... Uh, tiger fiber and, and now going through the different states. And what we're doing, and the reason why we're over there, is that the farmers are having a tough time with their crops. Yes. Now we're converting all those farmers into crops. But that's what I thought. This is yeah. kind of helping them. Absolutely. They're not that they're, they're not growing weed. They're growing hemp. Right. Which is the difference. And like C B D oil, Correct. that is totally different. I think so many people this should be explained out there easier. Yep. Not explain more, but easier. Just make it easier to explain to people what it is. Absolutely. Because hemp is helping our farmers. And I've, I've been reading about this and I've been hearing about it, about all the farmers are so excited right. that, you know, that they can now start growing this hemp. And everybody says, oh, it's weed and it's this and it's that. No, it's not. They're like, all these farmers right. that could go out there and get high. They're not. They're helping the industry. So yep. do you think eventually America is going to become sort of um, very orientated into the electric cars and hemp and clothing? And all this without question With, okay yeah without question i mean we're, we're so far ahead of the curve a lot of people don't know it and one of no, the they reason, don't know one it. of the reasons is we have a lot of money here so we can put that money behind the force yes to get it done yes. where a lot of other countries don't have they that don't advantage. have that that's like the stimulus check and the stimulus money that people have some people are up in arms about it my answer to that is it's going to recirculate into america mm -hmm. mostly 
Mm -hmm. So it's not dis the money's not disappearing. They're not going to just sort of put it in a pile and burn it all up. They're going to recirculate it. So you're not really losing any money because it's going in so many different places. Well, if you try to buy a house today, you have to bid on it 10 times over. I mean, the interest yes. rate's so far down. But the problem is the stimulus money's put it out there. People are outspending it, and it's showing. Yes. Definitely showing. I yeah. mean, casinos are now starting to get full. Again. That's right. You see, so, you, so people are so... And the, the, the whole world... Is you can have as much money as you want, but if you don't spend it and you don't circulate it, there's right. no point in having any money. I agree with that. So you have to circulate it. So and it's usually it's the um, the people that are on the lesser income are the ones that spend it. The people, that, the older ones, and the people that have got money, they're a little bit more cautious on spending money. Well, you know, but, it's funny because I am one of those cautious people, but we do spend a lot of money. Well, you do because of the manufacturing and everything you're right. doing. So right. And, you know. it, well, and you also learn how to control money, right? Because it's, well, yes. it's hard making that money. Because yeah, the government it. wants just, everybody has their hand out it's for just it. As hard, it's hard to make it and just as hard to, to keep, keep it. it. It's true. And then everybody says, well, you've got lots of money and you've got lots of stuff. And like, right. well, you, why, why, I've got to give it to you? <laughs> and you and I both know how hard that was to make money. Oh, very difficult. Because of you, you left home. Yep. With four hundred, you he had more money than I had. Yeah, but that's I was okay. young, young guy. Yeah, and lived on the beach for a while until you had know. Until like, so yeah. you sort of got yourself together and realized what you do. Did well, you to waste time? Well, one of the things I did not to waste time is I did a drawing of my first car. I went down to Beverly Hills on the street corner and said, "I need two million dollars <laughs> for my next car," and uh, I got the two million dollars. No, you didn't get it on the street corner. I did. did. I actually did. All right. I want the story now. <laughs> I want to hear this. I want to hear this story. Come on. Well, what happened was is that I, I went down to Beverly Hills on Wilshire and, and, and um, Beverly Drive. I know exactly where you were. Yeah. And I stood out the street corner and I just talked to everybody I could. I had my leather jacket and I looked like John Travolta with kind of long hair and holes in my jeans. and. <laughs> I love it. And well, I, this is typical Beverly Hills, though. You were right in. Absolutely. You know, back yeah. back in the day, it was in 1976. Okay. Right. Okay. So, and uh, this one. How old were you? 26 then? 25? No, 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 no. I was 19. 18. You're 18 at me. that time. Yeah, 18. Oh, you're pretty young then. I'm still young. <laughs> still young, yeah. Anyways, went in and um, put up this thing, and people would say, you know. What are you well, doing? Well, that's interesting, you know, and. And the one gentleman said, do you really believe you can build that car? I said, absolutely. And he said, where do you live? And I said, on the beach in Santa Barbara. And he said, oh, I do too. And I said, well, that's interesting. I said, you're on the beach and he is in a big house. <laughs> yeah, I was on the <laughs> beach and he's in a big house. Wasn't that rough, though? i got to tell you, there's showers. Yeah, you could do it. There's yeah. plenty... College. Plenty of water. Plenty of water to wash well, your there's bathing. a lot of college girls out there too, so... <laughs> Feeling his oats around there. <laughs> Love it. So, but anyways, we, we communicated, and he said, well, I'll, I'll give you a shot, and I'll give you the money as we go. And he did. Really? Yeah, he did. Do we have his name, or do you uh, want It was Stanfield's, yeah. He owned a, a big, uh, they manufactured uh, blades for, for saw blades and stuff. And, and he just saw the faith in you, even with your, you being so young, he, he knew this is what you wanted, and he yeah. was the man to help you. Yeah, he was drawn to me. I asked him why he did that. Um, is he still a friend of yours? Or is he oh, he's passed, passed away. away? Yes, uh, when, when I got him as an investor, he was in his late 80s, believe it or not. Oh. And um, So it, you were it, like a grandson. Exactly. To him. And yeah. he, oh, he was a very, very wealthy man. And he said, well, how are you getting back to um, Santa, Barbara, Santa Barbara? On a walk. <laughs> and I said, I'm not sure yet. He goes, well, jump in my car. And he pulled up into this very rare Bentley. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I like it. And we drove off. And so I started building. And that was the beginning that was the beginning. That was the beginning yeah. of your of your story. Yeah, and every week I would go down. Of a nineteen-year-old. Every week I would go down to Beverly Hills with Polaroids because we didn't have what we have today, mm -hmm. and say, "Here's the next best car," and I'd show them four wheels, and then the next week I'd show them a frame, and you know, as when you were building it, as you as were going I was building along. It, then I invited everybody to go to the nineteen seventy. But you had the tenacity to come up and show people to. Let them know what, what was happening. Well, they thought I was, was crazy. Well, I'm sure they did. You know, most people, <laughs> you know. when you're doing something like that, they think, you know, go a few screws or something. Well, even my family thought I was crazy. And half of them went to work for me. Yeah, until but now, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But anyways, um, in 1978, we're at the auto show, and I won Best of Show. 
And we took 16 orders, and the life went on from there. And that was the beginning. That was the, the beginning. Yeah, that you was know, the beginning. Um, I think you have, sir, you have just given an example to our younger generation. Um, 19, when he did this, he left home with very little money. Um, nothing stopped him. And I've always believed in that. I had a talk show for the younger generation called Voices of Tomorrow. Oh. And I gave them a platform from 12 to 18. I gave them a platform so that they could talk out and be somebody. Right. Because I believe every child has somebody within them. Everybody has something. And so, but you proved it by doing what you did. And this is a great example for any of you out there. If you think you can't go into Beverly Hills and just start talking to people, why not? Who's going to stop you? Exactly. No one will stop me. Everyone thought I was crazy. But so. look what happened. So this little old guy comes up to you and starts talking to you. I mean, you must have thought, well, what's he up to? You know, what's he? I mean, you probably never realized he'd probably do anything. Uh, no, I had a sense that he was really, really interested. Interested in you. Yeah, I, I really had that sense. And he was definitely interested in automobiles. Isn't that he knew nice. his cars. So I knew right away, you know, what that was all about. So... Absolutely fascinating story. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know, when you're a street person, you have a sixth sense, right? You you get the sixth you sense. You know something, you're right, because I still have it. Yeah. I still have it. To this day, yeah. I, I still have it. Yeah. It's funny because I still do an awful lot of things, and people think, oh, you know, why is she doing that? Yeah. Because I'm still normal. I'm still down. I'm still who I was when I left home. Oh, I'm yeah. still, and me too. I'm I still, haven't changed. No, I haven't changed. I mean, yeah, I may have this, I may have that, mm. but it's, it's still little old me. That's yep. all. It's little old me still out there. I'm not saying struggling, but you still struggle to get to the next thing. You still struggle to get this working and to get that done. It I've doesn't, been struggling to lose a little weight since. <laughs> well, I'm, I've, been struggling, I've been struggling <laughs> <laughs> since 19. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sir Albert, that's not. He looks pretty cool. You look. By the way, you, your name, Sir Albert, is named after a very um, exclusive king from England. Mm. There was Sir Albert in England, so yeah. you've got royalty attached to. Well, he's got more than royalty. Mm. Um, one message um, to the younger generation out there of what they should do to maybe not follow your steps, short steps, but in a way. I follow your dream. You know, things go slow. They need to go slow, not fast, okay. you know, because at the end of the runway, it'll, yeah. you'll, you'll be there, right? Yes. So it takes time. People don't realize how much time and patience it takes to get knowledge. It done. Yeah. That, well, the knowledge, you know, you learn the knowledge. We didn't oh, have the cool. internet then. No. We Today didn't. you have the internet. If you need a part, you have We it. never had any of that when we were young. Yeah. We had a strike. We couldn't even make, if we made a date with somebody or we were meeting somebody, right. that was it. Yeah. You didn't sort of, oh, I'm just checking to see if you're going to be there. Yeah. We never checked. We never, we couldn't. Okay, my phone bills used to be $5,000. Yeah. You, know, you don't realize it. You get on the phone, you're calling a vendor. Yes. Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have that? You know. It's, it's completely different in this day. Now it's $49. It's so much, it's... How does that work? <laughs> no. Yeah, we had to pay the price, right? <laughs> but I do, you know, I've been invited to many places to go speak and you know because I do try to help oh, good, encourage good. the kids the kids yes yeah. yeah and the smallest group I've ever had was uh, right outside of Rochester New York and they were six years old oh how sweet yeah. that yeah. was just funny you should say that because my very first show I did it was called kids talk at that time and my kids were from three years old to eight years old and they were a little bit too young to interview because they didn't know right. but they actually started my show because the little girl turned around to me and she's and it was a show about um, parents being divorced oh, and sure. the children was kind of sort of left you know where to hang in a little girl she turns around to me and she says I think they got divorced because of me and I looked at her and I thought oh my goodness I have a show Wow. because now these kids can be out there and they can talk of what's on. Of course, the divorce wasn't because of Absolutely. her at all, but that's, but that's what she felt. So they needed a divorce. You know, I went back to my high school. Uh, they asked me to speak in front of the kids. Uh, it was actually junior high school at the time. And, uh, and I told everybody, if you write me, I'll, I will write you back. And I ended up with about 200 letters, oh, and I handwritten everyone, everyone back. Wow, and I just goodness. got a star. I have a star in Palm Springs, but I got a star at my school. And the teacher came back to me and handed me back all my letters that I wrote to all those kids. If you can imagine, it was 25 years later. I couldn't believe it. Oh, so this it. is 25 yeah. after the fact. And she said, you wrote every kid. I said, yeah, well, yeah I wrote every one of them. And encouraged because each one, one was them. important right. to you. Yeah. And one of the kids was in lots of trouble drugs, whatnot, and I picked him up in the car and I drove him around and said, this could be you because I was you at one time. Not with drugs, but everything else. Uh, yeah. And 
next thing I know, I get a call. This is years later. He's a doctor. Oh, my And goodness. he's treating my mother. Oh. <laughs> How ironic is that? Yeah. So it's amazing what you you yeah, touched him. You don't him. know where it's going to come touched from. Him. You don't yeah. know. And you, yeah. you don't because I I did the show for sixteen years. Right. I, I I knew all the schools in Los Angeles. I knew all the kids, and I never pre-interviewed them because you can't pre-interview kids because right. they don't. Like, well, I didn't pre-interview either. Right. I never pre-interview anybody because I like I absolutely like the story. I like yeah. the story coming out how it how it should be. Um, so Alfred, you've been amazing. Anything you would like to suggest out there as of what's going on right now with the pandemic or anything? Well, you know, the pandemic is a whole different deal. Story. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a whole story in yeah, itself. In itself and yeah. I just tell people, you know, try to be safe. Try you know, to be safe and yeah, take care of yourself. Especially the elder. Yeah. I think, you know, people don't realize, but this has been around for a long time. COVID, if you look at it, it's been around yes. for around 12 years. I just wonder what happened to the flu, because it seems there's no ads on the television about taking flu or, or you know, those different flu things you can take. There's no advertisements of them. I haven't heard one word about flu. Well, Flu's kind of gone out the window, flew out the window, so. Well, if you, in San Diego County, they did a whole survey of who got the flu and not one person got the flu. Not one got the flu, no. Nobody's so had flu in the now, entire world. Everything now is COVID. COVID, COVID yes. COVID, I mean, if you've got so. a heart attack, it's COVID. If you've got yeah. diabetes, it's COVID. If you've got yeah. the, whatever, it's all COVID, so. Yeah. And I'm not being sarcastic, and I'm not being anything out there. I'm just saying the facts. Yeah, that's just, that is a fact. That is a fact, and that's what's out yeah. there. And I'm like, huh? What's going on? Yeah. I yeah, have I to agree. thank you. Absolutely an amazing guest, but what an accomplishment. And congratulations on everything. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for watching Vegas Live with Ninon. Uh, we'll be back with our next guest. But don't forget to go to uh, YouTube and check out our shows and see what we're doing. It's all out there. We'll see you in the next guest. Take care. If you enjoy the last show we just did and all the other shows, don't forget to subscribe Vegas Live with Nino on YouTube. We've got plenty more coming up and our guests are amazing. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be right back. Vegas Live with Nino.